Thank God. Hallelujah. Come on. Sometimes we just need to remember. It was a command of the scripture. Remember. Yes. Glory to God. And so we love God this morning and we give him all the glory, the honor, and the praise for what he did for us through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Well, as we go before the Lord and uh, we, we come to minister a word in season as uh, God has uh, moved upon our hearts. And so, you know, Pastor has been uh, talking to us about, um, he's been teaching a variety of things. He, for a season there, he was talking to us about pulling down strongholds, right? Anybody doing it? Are you really doing it? You're practicing it? Glory to God. All right, because we want to we want to remove anything that could be binding us in our mind and keeping us from coming into what God has for us. And he talked to us about staying in peace, having the kind of peace that makes no sense. Amen. How are you going to sustain that? Attending to the word of God. Being inspired by what it says because the word of God is what? Truth. It is our truth and it, it is our confidence, uh, how we find confidence in living this born again life. And then he started talking to us about taking control. Right? Yeah. Now y'all forgot that. That was the last one. Yeah. Taking control um, over situations and circumstances in your life. Because when Jesus went to the cross and he went down in the grave and he got up with all power and authority in his hand, he willed that authority and power to who? That's right. So um, while God is, a, is the God who is the creator of everything, he, he's Elohim, he created everything. And he is God, he is sovereign, and he can do what he wants, when he wants to, how he wants to do it, right? Is that the God we serve? And so I want you to recognize that it was in his sovereignty, him doing what he wants, laying it out how he wants to, he decided that he would give you and me authority in the earth, right? And so, uh, so he's in control of things, but he's given us control over, th over things. Amen? Do you, is that right? Okay. And so, uh, as Pastor was talking to us, we, we, a lot of times people are looking and waiting for, uh, they're waiting for God to just jump in and take charge over their situation and to advance things um, that they want to see happen. But who gets to choose whether or not those things manifest? We do. So he's saying, when he was saying to us, take control, taking control, we have a responsibility and accountability to do some things. Amen? All right. So... Um, so I don't even know what the name of this message is. I don't have one. I just said, let's do it. <laughs> That's the best I can say right now. Let's do these things, right? Let's do these things because we need to do these things um, so that we can experience and realize the fullness of what God desires for us to have. Now, I'm, I'm going to try to lay this down because this is impeding. Glory to God. All right. Amen. So, um, so let's, um, so let's, let's uh, go to first Peter, the fourth chapter. I started talking to you about some things a few weeks back or along this line, and I want to be able to bring um, some more insight to you as a uh, pastor had asked me to do a little bit and touch on uh some of the reasons why we may very well have the mindsets that we have. Um, so in 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, 
First Peter, the fourth chapter, real quickly in the 12th verse, uh, it says, having your conversation uh, honest among the Gentiles. Uh, did, I, did I write that? Say that right? No, I'm, oh, because I'm in the second chapter reading. Okay. <laughs> okay, 12, the fourth chapter, the 12th verse. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But he says, rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. So we see here in scripture, as we talked about last time, that sometimes um, we, need, we need to accept or um, the fact that in life, there's some challenges that will come. And the reason why he said, think it not strange concerning fiery trials, because he's saying that they're going to happen, right? Yeah. Fiery trials are going to happen, and, um, but there's an intent uh, by the enemy. He's using it to try to take you out. He's, he's using it to try to interrupt you being able to do just what Jesus did. Fulfill the plan of God concerning you. He doesn't want you to experience all the joy, all the happiness, all of the, all of the things that God has said comes in the package of salvation. He doesn't want you to realize it. He doesn't want you to experience it in the fullness. Uh, and so while we know that life happens, and we said last time, life just kind of be life in sometimes. Sometimes things happen um, uh, because in life there's going to be some challenges. And then sometimes things happen because of the choices we make. Yeah. Can, can, can we be honest? Yeah. I mean, if, if we're really going to get this concept, then we got to face truth about how, how we, the choices that we make and how we let them impact our future. How we let it impact us for, uh, fulfilling our destiny and being able to come into all that God has for us. But we know we do have an adversary. That adversary is intentionally working to try to take us out. And we, 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 even if we went and we looked at how he came for Jesus, we talked about that. He came for Jesus with the intent to interrupt God's plan concerning him. However, when he tried to convince Jesus uh, uh, um, that he took the very same, the scriptures that Jesus, Jesus meditated on and used as a reflection for how to walk his journey out in the earth. He took those very same scriptures and he tried to use them, pervert them in a perverted manner so that Jesus would, would yield and bow um, to his influence. So he's a deceiver. And his intent is to try to keep us from experiencing the glory of God being manifesting in our lives. But I tell you, we, 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 if we get an understanding of these things and we practice these concepts, if we, if we recognize that we got to do some things to keep our, our mind in the right place, because we, that's the place of decision. And so if we can keep our mind in the right place and our heart is in the right place, then we'll see some things manifest because what we speak out of our mouth will be a reflection of that which we believe. Amen. All right? Yeah. And we're going to see some things happen according as God has promised it in his word. And so we looked at Psalms 20, the 23rd Psalms, um, in the 23rd book of Psalms, and we looked at the fact that it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death." There's going to be some valley moments. Amen. But he said, I'll fear no evil. That is making a decision to not allow fear to grip me, right? And to be, and, and make a decision to walk in the confidence in knowing that even though I'm going through something right now, I'm going to come out yeah. on the other side victoriously and the Lord is going to lay out some things on my behalf and the enemy and all my enemies will see 
that God is good to me, that he's a God of preservation, that he's a God who advances us to the, his will concerning us, and he's a God that brings us into promotion. Because So we know that he even said, your goodness and your mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He talked about how his rod and staff, staff would comfort even when a shepherd has a rod and a staff, he has a rod to kind of, when, some, when something comes to try to attack his sheep, the rod is to beat them away, to, to get them out of harm's way, not beat the sheep, but whatever is trying to come at them. Yeah. And the staff is to show them what direction to go in. If one gets off too, to the, too, too far to the left, he'll take that little hook, pull you back, right? Because there is an intent to make sure that you arrive where you're supposed to be. Y'all yeah. see that? Yeah. God has an intent to make sure that we arrive where we're supposed to be. And we're supposed to, and, and to walk in what we're supposed to have. Safety, preservation. And so we, 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 we uh, talked about a little bit about um, experiences in life and that trauma happens to everybody probably has something that they could identify from their life that uh, represented some type of trauma, right? And um, we said to you, uh, you, we want you to be clear that God loves you so much that he's concerned about your well-being. And if you're experiencing trauma in your life or you've experienced trauma in your life, God is concerned about it. And that's what, that's what we said. We talked about how he, there are people in the Bible and he inspired men to pin about them and their lives. And he pinned, that he had them pin things that reflected their trauma. Right? Didn't jo we said Joseph had trauma? Right? Um, Moses, was he traumatized? Anybody else can think of anybody else in the Bible that God had them write about? Abraham. He experienced some trauma. Job. Woo, that's a good one. Job experienced some trauma. But this is the thing I want you to know, even since you, since you brought it up, I thought about Job this morning. And I just want to make sure you're clear that even, you know, people say God gave, uh, God uh, set that up for Job to go through all he went through. That's what people say. Come on, let's be real. However, remember we said you got to take control. So let's think about this. The scripture, even when it was reflecting on Job, talks about how Job was an upright man. He served the Lord with all his heart. He, 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 he was, he was a, a, a pillar in his day because he honored God. But there was one thing that was in Job's behavior that presented over and over again. And that was Job had fear. He had fear resonating in his heart. He was fearing the outcomes that could, could possibly present for his children who were running wayward who were not living the Bible, were, were not living according to the standard that he was setting bef before them. So he was always in fear and concerned that something would become, would become of them that was negative, right? So, so what is the point here? When is, is, is fear God's domain? No. What is God's domain? Faith. Faith. So, in, so when he began to operate in this fear, and then Satan comes before the Lord and says, you know, you got a hedge of protection around him. And, uh, and, and, and if, you, if you didn't have that hedge of protection around him, I'd be able to get to him. And I would, I would be able to shift him. Because that, that's his intent. Yeah. And so, um, and God, God he, he was willing, he said, you, you've considered my servant Job. But God was so confident in his servant Job that he would stand, right? And he would, he would continue to believe that God was who he said he was. 
and that he would trust him to bring him out of his situation, right? And so, and so, uh, so it was the fear in Job's heart and mind that opened the door that gave the enemy entrance. I, I, I'm saying that because this is, where, this is where we, something we have to think about and something we have to consider. God loves us, and he wants his best for us. But we can open doors. Oh, yeah. We can. We can open doors that give the enemy an opportunity to enter into a situation and reap havoc in it. That's, that's truth. Okay. So what we need to do to resist that, because the scripture says, resist the enemy, right? Yeah. And he will flee, right? Yeah. So what we need to do to resist that is to continue in the word of God, building ourselves up in faith, saying, God said that he, beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Prosperity is what God wants for me. So if, I, if, I'm, if I'm rehearsing that and faith is being built up in my heart concerning that, then I can experience it. And, the, and if, I do, if, I'm, I, if I'm doing that and positioning myself according to that, I can ward off the attacks of the enemy. Amen. All right. So, um, so I, wanna, I want to... Uh, I, I, okay. So although our challenges in life... Um, and, life, and life's experiences can leave us feeling overwhelmed, depleted sometimes, disappointed, wounded, devastated, and maybe at points in times we may feel hopeless. Anybody in the room? Because you got to be honest first with yourself. All right, if you're having these, these feelings, they're real. Then... You, you have, you, when you become aware that they're existing, then you can decide to do something about it. That's why I say you recognize and acknowledge feelings. But how you manage them or how you let them manage you is going to be the key. So um, you see, the devil who is our adversary is looking to keep us bound in our minds so that we do not realize or experience the good things the Father has intended for us. He works, with, he works to battle against our minds. That this is, that's the, that's the, the place where he can influence us, right? He has access to our minds. Um, he, the enemy, wants us to become so discouraged that we give up on God. He wants us to turn back on trusting and believing in God. He promises and he, 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 wants, us to, he wants us to forget that God made us promises. He wants us um, to think that his ability is greater than God's ability and that God won't do what he said he will do. That's his intent. He wants to influence our minds that way. But so the enemy would like to devour us. The scripture says that, de describes him that way. I just want to, I want, I want to read it to you real quick uh, here in the Amplified. 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, Be sober, well-balanced, and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. The enemy of yours, the in, that enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. But resist him. Be firm in your faith. He's saying, how are you going to resist him? Be firm in your faith against his attack. Rooted, established, immovable, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters throughout the world. You do not suffer alone. After ye have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who imparts his blessings and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself 
complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, making you what you ought to be. To him be dominion, power, authority, sovereignty, forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God. So the scripture is here is, is indicating to us that we have to have a sound mind. That we have to have, we, we, we have to be self-disciplined, have a sound mind, and um, con so that we are able to withstand the attacks in the, uh, of the enemy. And because if we don't, when he comes and he makes a suggestion and we adopt it as truth, right? We adopt that, that, that lie as truth then it can become our reality. But if we resist it and say, oh no, I have the promise of God. I have what he has said I can have. I'm going to live life to the fullest and I'm going to experience all that he has established in his word and said I can experience. If I, say, if I take that position and I bind, up his, I bind him, bind his works, right? and I lose what God has said in my life, I'm going to see it come to pass. Y'all following me? Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to connect dots. I want, I want to, because what we need for, to happen is for you to be built up so that you can, ten, can continue with momentum in the process. Not drop off, and then we come and give you another message, and then you start all over again. Anything, anything that is going to accelerate means it's going to have to be some momentum yes. picking up, right? Yes. Some momentum happening. If something is accelerating, the momentum is greater and greater, right? Yes. All right. So, so um, what we need to remember is that God has plans and intents for us. Even in Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, 11th verse, and from the Amplified Version, it says, For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, said the Lord, plans of peace and well-being, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Anybody got hope for their future? Amen. Do you embrace that this is God's plan concerning you? Yeah. All right. So... So what I, I want you to know is that the, the enemy, our adversary, is neither all-knowing or all-powerful. Be clear on that. He's not all-knowing because he's not the creator. He was created by the creator as a servant, angel, right? He was created by the, by the creator. So he doesn't know all things. He doesn't know everything in the mind of God. He doesn't, he doesn't know everything that is designed to happen. He didn't know all the details about how Jesus was going to walk out his assignment to bruise his head. Amen. Right? Amen. Okay. So he doesn't know all things and he's not all powerful. He's not more powerful than the one who created him. Amen. And he's not more powerful than the one who got up, who went down in hell and made an open show of him. Amen took back the power and the, the keys to the kingdom, right? Yes. So we, we have to put that in context and put them in place. He does not know God's plans and intents for you until we put it out there in the air. It's put out in the air. And so uh, uh, man, so uh, man, even when he said uh, the things that he was saying about man, that he was going to walk in authority and dominion in the earth, and he didn't know about it till God put it out there in the air, right? And when God put it out there in the air, it was for who? Adam to embrace it, right? It's for us to embrace it, all right, that we have dominion and authority. Uh, but he does, oh, I'm talking about the enemy now, he does recognize when we fear. And um, he recognizes it be by the way we act, the things we do, the, our behaviors, and the things we say, just like with Job. Okay, so so when we say when we we think negative thoughts and we give voice to them, 
when he makes the enemy makes suggestions to our mind and we give voice to them. Um, then uh, when we give voice to those negative thoughts, then he comes murky. Oh, they're giving me something to work with. Mm. And he wants to go into action. So when he's seeking whom he may devour, he listens to their words and that we speak and watches the actions that we take to reflect uh, what we really do believe. So we have to be conscious of this factor, which is why Pastor talked to us about watching what we say. Pastor has spent time talking about to us about the essence also of strongholds. And it was said that a stronghold is a fortress of lies. The enemy uses the fortress of lies and he builds them in your mind and your emotions. It is a place of arrest, captivity, confinement, detention, imprisonment, or incarceration in your thinking. So if you're incarcerated, come on, I want you to get the picture. If you're incarcerated, you're in jail and you're confined. You don't have the liberty to do and to move like you want, want to, right? Because you're restricted. Well, when strongholds get in our mind, it restricts our ability to make movement. Yes. It restricts our, it affects our ability to get some momentum going. Yes. The kind of momentum that God wants to see us flowing in. Because we have the power living on the inside of us. Yes. The ability, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Yes. That's the power that's on the inside of us. Yes. Come on, somebody need to say that to yourself. The same power, the same power. that raised Jesus from the dead from the is the same power, the same power. that's living big that's living on the inside of me. Inside of me. Now do something with it. I'm saying you need you you got to activate his ability in you to move in your life. Why? Because who's in control? Okay. All right. So uh, so this sense of imprisonment it restricts, it impedes, it interrupts, it prevents, it uh, it tries to keep us from our destiny. So I, it's safe to say any lie that a person believes can imprison them, right? Any lie can, can imprison you. The more lies you embrace as truth, the more imprisoned you become. Did y'all hear that? The more lies you embrace as truth, the more imprisoned you become. And that's exactly what the enemy wants. Okay. So I believe if you become fully consumed with attending to developing your relationship with God and his word, it will become a natural progression. That will become natural for you, a natural progression toward finding his will concerning you and actually experiencing it. So oftentimes these strongholds get their foot to footing through the lies that we adopt as truth based on our past experiences in life many of which could be identified as traumatic, okay? So when we have traumatic experiences in life, it has the potential to, uh, um, it has a potential, the experience of it has the potential to impact us in a way that it restricts us, it limits us, and it changes our, it helps us to think in an unhealthy manner. So trauma is a lasting emotional response to a distressing event um, that has occurred and you find it difficult to cope with it. Anybody had any trauma in the room? I saw three hands go up, y'all are blessed. No, y'all dead, that's what it is. Why, y'all dead? Cause I said, that's like you alive, the Bible says you're going to have some trials and tribulations and that you shouldn't think it's strange, right? right. So when I said, do you, anybody in the room had trauma and only a few hands went up, I'm concerned. You, you, you've had it. Do you, maybe you don't recognize it to be trauma. Maybe. I've had it. All right. And it has a great potential to impact uh, how you move in life. It can present as a single event or it could or it could have 
been an ongoing thing that was happening in your life over an extended period of time. And um, when, that, when, it, when it starts to get its inroads into you and, and affect you and how you function, because it mess with your mind. Yes. Okay. So uh, trauma triggers something. A uh, trauma trigger is something that causes your mind to recall a traumatic event or a series of events. And those triggers are often tied to, as I said last time, the five senses. So when you see something happen, it kind of reminds you and takes you back. And it, when it takes you back, it causes you to start behaving in the way that you learned to behave when it was going on. Yes. Do y'all follow that? Yes. So, um, so if 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 there was if there was domestic violence in your home, I'm just come thinking of coming up with something. And um, and dad would come home and maybe he was intoxicated and he would he would come and he would beat on mom. And then uh, as a child, you would want to, you would want him to stop it, daddy, stop it. But you knew you couldn't you couldn't do anything to intervene, right? So maybe what you did was went and hide hid in the closet, or went or or you went to the to watch TV and watch TV like this as if nothing was going on around you. Um, I, there's all kinds of ways. Uh, if you, so you maybe pretended that it wasn't happening. So what you learned to do, it was to deny what was before you and minimize it and put it away like it wasn't a real experience. But it was. Okay. So then you go through life, and as you go through life, when you see situations presenting, you know they're not right. You want to say something, but the way you coped is you lost your voice. You got quiet, and now you, have, you, you, you see it, and it's wrong, and you know it's wrong, but you won't say nothing. You just go inward and get silent. You see that? Okay, so that's a behavior, a pattern of behavior. Okay, so so um, what 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 I, what I want to say here is, what we have come to understand from the psychological perspective is that unhealthy experiences can help individuals develop distorted thought patterns or unhealthy stinking thinking. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then the feelings and the emotions come to influence how we behave. So if you have something happen, an experience happen, then these thoughts come to your mind about what you, you're, you're observing happening, and then it stirs up these feelings on the inside of you, these emotions, and it causes you to act out a certain way. So we cope, we, we learn how to cope with situations based on, uh, the experiences we've had, and they shape us into uh, when the feelings get stirred up, then we, this is typically how we behave. So when we repeatedly experience these types of encounters, we develop out behaviors. That become a pattern for us. Those behaviors become a pattern in life for us, and we take them from childhood through adulthood. Then we tend to resort to the behaviors, whether they're good or bad, as our way of coping or surviving in life. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Okay. So as these, these behaviors and coping styles are reinforced over time, they're reinforced over time with negative messages we received and we've embraced about ourselves from the experience or the encounter. Okay, so I, I, you know, the last time I was up and I, I started this, I don't know, I kept saying, I don't know why I'm talking to y'all about my water experiences because I, I talked about, um, <clears throat> I talked about my experience up at uh, Lake Lanier. And I talked about my experience of being in the car, um, crossing the Rock River in a car that ran, the brakes went out, right? And um, that 
either if 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 we were in this lane, this is the bri- the uh, side of the, the end of the bridge. And so uh, when the brakes went out, he could have gone over in the river. But but God, in His preservation, inspired him, and he tried to go down this space that was between two cars. And, and I thought, well, so, so yeah, that was, those were experiences. But what was significant about it was that I couldn't swim. And so I started thinking about that whole, how, how this is, so I, this is a real simplified example. I want you to get your mind to start thinking in this context. So, cause this is where you're going to find some, some breakthrough and some victory. So I couldn't swim. And I couldn't, I, I couldn't swim because I didn't grow up around um, water, doing, uh, doing anything like going to a, a club that had swimming lessons available. And one year, my, every summer for a while, my dad would take the family to a uh, camp up in Black Lake, Michigan. And we would, go to, we would go to this camp, and the kids would go up and stay on the mountain and, and have camp, and it would give the parents an opportunity to have relaxation and vacation down in their, in their compound. And so um, I had met a friend um, at the camp, and, I was in the, in the camp, and we would go to the pool every day, state-of-the-art pool. And my friend knew how to swim. And she was so good at it that she was jumping off the diving board. And um, we were 12 years old. And so her, her, and her sister was there, and her sister was like cheering her on, and she, you're doing so good. And they would get, she, they'd take turns and they go jump off the diving board, they go deep, they come up, they swim on all the way out to the side. And so I said, man, so she started talking to me. She said, it's not that hard, you can do it. You can do it, I'll, I'll teach you. So, so she just started working with me on the side in the shallow end. And she started helping me learn how to, you know, do my arms and to move my, my legs and feet. And, uh, and so then we, and we practiced going down in the water and staying down there and then floating up, right? And so uh, then I jumped off the side of the pool in the shadow end, in more shadow end, and I was practicing. I was practicing. Now we there for, um, I, I, I think we used to stay for two weeks, but um, if I'm not, if I'm recalling correctly. So by the end of camp, we're coming up on the last day. She said, and on the last day, you're gonna do it. You're gonna jump off the diving board. And she said, you can do it. And she said, she talked to her sister and you, 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 we're gonna help her. She said, you're gonna watch her. You're gonna sit on the side so that if anything goes wrong, her sister said, I assure you, I'm watching you, I'll be, I'll be watching you, and if I need to jump in, I will. So they built me up in confidence. And so the last day came, and it was time to walk the plank. <laughs> and I walked to the end of the diving board, and I looked, And I realized it was somebody waiting behind me. And uh, I said, I, I guess I got to go. But I can do this, because I've been practicing. So I jumped off the diving board, went down in the water. The part we didn't practice was that the deep end was much deeper. <laughs> so my mind wasn't ready for that part. And so when I went down and I started doing everything they told me to do to come up, and I was like, hey, where's the top? (laughs) And I kept saying, where's the top? And then I started saying, where's the top? top?" Oh, did I? I did. Okay, Okay, I'm sorry. And I, yeah, okay, I did. I lost my composure. And then I started to think, Oh my God, I'm gonna drown. And so that became my focus. Did I just tear up the microphone? Okay, all right. Is that better? Okay. And so I saw, saw, oh, okay. I'm gonna go back to here. I think I I, I did something to trigger. So we'll cut it off. Okay. So then. So um, I worked my way, so I was panicking. And 
I, I felt like I had been down in there for five minutes and I still hadn't got to the top. And then all of a sudden, I felt some arms come and grab me. And she pulled me up and pulled me to the side. And uh, she was like, you did it. And I told you I would come if you got in trouble. And she did. But I tell you what happened. After that experience, a stronghold got in my mind. And I thought I could never swim in the deep end. Because if I do try, I'm going to drown. So now we, in where I grew up in school, you had to go to, you had to take swim lessons at school. It was a class. You had to pass. And so um, I would go to swim, swimming class, and I'd, I'd hang on in the, in the shallow end, and I'd go to the halfway point, and that would kind of be it. And then the teacher would say, you're doing good. And she says, you got to go to the next level. So now you got you to gotta swim all the way from the shallow end to the deep end. Uh -uh. <laughs> so I, so I, I didn't have a choice. So I would get out there and, and try. And every time I did the test, I did not pass. Why? Because what was in my mind? That I, that, that I can't do, I can't swim in the deep end. I'm going to drown. And so, um, <clears throat> so, so this is, so, so in this case, um, I realized that um, I let this have a grip on me. And it had a grip on me for a very long time. My kids knew how to swim better than me because I took them to get swim lessons. And I would be sitting on the side watching them swim. And oh, you're doing so good, and I'm celebrating them. And, they, 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 and I'm thinking, but if they got in trouble, and I was sitting on the side, could I do for them what that girl did for me? Mm. So I started feeling, I feeling like, I need to exercise what I, what I teach, and I need to find some faith to overcome and get this stronghold out of my mind, because that's what it was. So I decided, to, after they got done with their swim lessons, I would go and start having swim lessons. So I went and had swim lessons, and I learned how to swim, and I learned how to go to the deep end. I learned how to stay out there in the deep end and tread a little bit, and you know, I, I, I was good. I, I was feeling good. I wasn't jumping off the diving board, but I would jump off the side. That was, that was, that was movement. Come on, that was momentum, right? <laughs> and so then um, it was good. It was all fine and well until we decided to go on a vacation, Pastor and I, and we went on a cruise uh, in Mexico, and we ended up in Mexico on a stop, and we decided to go scuba diving because I'm thinking I know how to swim now. So uh, we went scoop. They, they took us out in a boat way out. And they, they told us how to put on the gear. And um, I put the gear on, and I jumped in the water. And then I looked down. And I couldn't see a bottom. <laughs> then my mind started going back. And then I, I started, I was trying to float and do the things that I, I knew to do, I learned to do, but this thing was overpowering my mind and I just started panicking because I was thinking I'm going to run out of energy and I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to sustain this. I'm not going to be able to sustain this. So the, the man, I said, put me, put me back in the boat. He was like, no, it's so beautiful. It's all the beautiful fish you see. I don't care nothing about no fish right right now. I don't even want to eat none. <laughs> I just, I want to get out of the water. So I, so I got out and I let Pastor enjoy himself. And, uh, but this is a crazy thing. I, didn't, because I came back. We came back from that trip. And when I, we got back, I usually, I have motion sickness on boats. So I usually go with a patch. And um, this patch, I had, the patch was doing its job. But now when I get back and I'm on ground and the patch is running out, all of a sudden, I'm having an effect. And I start going like this, in circles. All, I couldn't 
stop going in circles. And it, the momentum of it was so great that the only way I could stop was I'd have to run myself into a wall so that I could stop and stand still. Well, went to the doctor. They started talking about maybe there's a brain tumor. Oh, Jesus. Now, we ain't receiving that. And so uh, they wanted to have, to, to have things examined uh, to determine whether or not that was the case. Well, praise God. We, we believe that it wasn't. Um, it, what it turned out to be was when I took that snorkeling equipment, put it on my face, and you have to suck up. You know, you, 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 you suck up with the air in there. And somehow something got lodged in my sinus cavity. And it needed to have it time to work itself out. So it was causing me to do have this moment, this movement. And I realized this thing, I realized that I started saying I could swim. I actually started doing a little swimming, but I, I backed up from it. And so what I realized is that even th that, that when you, even when you start working on renewing your mind and, and conquering and pulling down the strongholds that are in your mind, and you, 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 you're, you're trying to make movement forward, if you're not careful, it'll come back up on you. And so I didn't, I, I, I didn't, do, I didn't practice. I didn't, I didn't prepare for that to happen on the trip. I hadn't been to the pool in a long time. I wasn't, I, my mind wasn't in the right place. So it was very easy for my mind to go into a negative place. W what's the point I'm making? When it, when, when it comes even to you, if you don't preserve and protect your thoughts and keep renewing them with the word of God, building confidence, right? You can be overcome. So that was my, one of my, simple traumatic experiences. But I want you to see the concept is what I want you to see. And how that experience of not knowing how to swim went with me and the enemy, if he had had his way, when I was crossing the Rock River. When I was crossing the Rock River, if he had had his way, if I had gone over would I have survived and lived to do what I'm doing today? If the enemy had had his way at Lake Lanier, when we were out there on, on, the, on, the, on the lake and a tornado was on the ground and the, and the, the hail was coming and golf ball size, if the enemy had had his way because if I had gone in, I would not probably have come up. Yeah. Looking for ways, seeking whom he may devour. Looking for ways to get you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, I feel like even in Mexico, if he had had his way, because I, I wasn't keeping my mind in the right place. He would have, it would have been good to, to him to see me go down then too. So, what, so, so I, 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 want, I want you to understand that when you have experiences in life and you just start to develop this kind of thinking, it's negative, negative thinking. And you start to believe negative things about yourself. Those things can bind you. I'm so unworthy. You know, I'm a failure. I don't ever do anything right. Anybody in the room? So all of this is relative. I think that God wants us to grow in this area to the degree that he's allowing us to tap the psychological side 
and help you to see how it's impeding what's in your spirit from, from manifesting fully. Mm. Mm. So we, 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 we're going to get a little deeper into this. Because I think that if you, can, if you can start to notice the thoughts, and if you can start to be sensitive to the feelings that come as a result of the thoughts, and if you can recognize, you can, you can recognize that I seem to feel this way because it reminds me of when, and this is how I cope. And I cope this way because I believe some lie that the enemy has told me about me. So if we can expose the devil, if we can expose what's there, we, if we can unearth it, if we can do that, then we can address it. We can address it well so that uh, when you start doing some of the concepts and principles uh, that they teach the psychology, you, 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 uh, you start to see some results. But you also go mix it with Romans 12. You're going to be renewing your mind with the word of God. And it'll be easier for you to do it. It'll be easier for you to do it because you get the concept. Anybody getting this? Yeah. I, I know there's this more teaching, but I, want, I, I, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe that if you, if you, can, if you can tap into this, you're going to see some shifts for the better. I believe that it has a lot to do with why God also asked me not only to preach the word, but to go and prepare and equip to help people in this capacity. So, so if, you, if you just hang in here, if you just hang in here, you're going to notice I've been bound and I want to be free. And some momentum is going to pick up. Amen. Amen. Well, glory to God. All right. I'm, so uh, if you're here this morning um, and you uh, don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we invite you um, right now uh, to come and to receive him as your Savior and Lord. We talked about it earlier in service that he came uh, and died on the cross for our sins and shed his innocent blood, that we might be able to have a right relationship with God, that we might be able to uh, walk in the authority the, uh, that Adam had in the beginning. And so if you want to be a part of that experience and you want to be a part of the family of God, we invite you to come. If you're here this morning and uh, you are in Christ but you know that uh, there's been some experiences and some things that has gotten you off um, the beaten path. And you want to be restored and renewed in your relationship uh, with God. We invite you to come this morning. If you're here this morning and uh, you do not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is evidenced by speaking in tongues, tapping into the power that has been invested on the inside of you, when the Holy Spirit came to live on the inside, he came to equip us and to empower us to be successful as believers in life. Having the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a tool that we use to help us to arrive there. If you're here and God has been dealing with your heart, that agape is the place for you. We invite you to come and be a part of this work. We want to have the privilege to pour into your life and to help you to grow up in the things of God. Help you to advance and make momentum. Glory to God. Glory. 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 Glory.
Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Is there anybody else? I've given four invitations. Salvation. Rededication. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Church membership. We invite you to come. Anybody? Well, we thank God and we celebrate the one that has come. We give God glory for you having the courage <laughs> to interrupt anything that the enemy was trying to, to put on your life so that you can continue to walk in victory in the confidence in who you are in Christ Jesus. Greater is he that lives on the inside of you than he that is in the world. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. And so we thank God for you having the courage to come. And uh, we have someone who's going to take you into uh, the conference room and they're going to minister to you and talk to you about the decision that you've made this morning. And we just declare and decree that this is a new day in your life. Amen. Amen. Yes, a new day. Hallelujah. The advancement to a greater day. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> the Lord loves you and he loves your spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we celebrate you here today. God bless you. You follow. Glory. standing on their feet. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of gathering. We thank you, Father, for the truth that has been revealed this morning. Help us to understand. Get the, thank you for helping us to get the understanding and to recognize the tactics of the enemy. Helping us to see that we can achieve some things. We can have peace that makes no sense. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we grow in the knowledge of the truth that we can control and influence our own destiny. We thank you, Father, for that and we declare in the name of Jesus we're going to new places in you. So every weapon that has been formed against us will not prosper. Every chain that has been binding us shall be broken and destroyed in our lives. And Father, we're making movement to your glory. In Jesus' name, you are dismissed.